No game? <laughs> the game without a name. Oh, that's very sad. Um, how, about, how about this team? Yeah, we call it Scrum. You call it Scrum? <laughs> but that's okay. Um, we all suck at Scrum. We're trying to get better. That's the whole idea. This team? Plays the same game. Same game? We do everything. You do everything? Try Scrum. Try Scrum. Do you go for Scrum? Yeah, good. Scrum. Scrum, okay. So, uh, no one said Kanban, and Kanban is very, po is very popular. Kanban is not a game. It's a method. And it has all the problems of, of method. Even the inventor of Kanban says rule number six of Kanban is to eliminate all Kanban from the system. Now, I'm not mentioning this to try to critique Kanban per se, but to critique the fact that most Agile practitioners wouldn't know the difference. That they put Kanban and Scrum and XP all in the same category, and they're radically different. So, there's a need to recognize the need, the need for autonomy and to develop mastery following a purpose. And that's what Scrum is all about. Now, Alistair Coburn used to call Agile a cooperative game. They don't look very cooperative. <coughs> um, Scrum is a game. How many of you have heard a talking head in Scrum talk about crushing the competition? I mean, that's, that's a game. The, the purpose of most games is to win. You're all here to win the Agile Challenge. We're going to play a game. And I have heard Jeff Sutherland say this. I mean, in some, some parts of Scrum are very American, and it's about crushing the competition. It's about winning. It's about a sports metaphor. And of course, there's a lot of things we learn in Scrum in order to get better and better. We learn teamwork <laughs> so that we all will end up the same. And a great Scrum team learns one piece continuous flow. <laughs> a good scrum team, the entire team does one PBI at a time. But you know, it's more than, than just working well with our colleagues. And the vision of any enterprise always is with respect to some kind of competition. So, Communism is more or less dead. I live in one of the most socialistic countries in the world, which is Denmark. Um, but I mean, capitalism is still alive in the marketplace. It's a really nice mix. Um, is capitalism about winners and losers? Is your company out to destroy the other company? Capitalism is a game. Who wins? What is the theory of capitalism in game theory? Who wins? The consumer. Because one vendor will innovate and come up with something that is better for the market, that causes the other vendor to try to innovate to do even better. And you have this. So there are temporary winners in the vendors, but the real winner is the market, the end user. So too often we view capitalism in a military way where the companies are the winners and the losers. So among vendors, there should be no concept of a winner. The optimum is a continuous change in places. But too often we view competition like this. And, um, you know, beware of those who, uh, who stand between a competitive jerk and his goals. 
So, is it about winning? Who wins? I read a book several years ago that changed my life. It's uh, by a theologian named James Carse. And, I mean, technically he's a Christian theologian, but it's, it's much broader than that. So he says, everything in life you can model as a game. And there are two kinds of games. There are finite games, and there are infinite games. Now, in a finite game, the purpose of the game is to win the game. And to make this possible, we have rules. And the rules are fixed. And you voluntarily sign up to play a finite game. And you voluntarily sign up to play by the rules and abide by the outcome. The goal is, at the end of the game, to have a winner and a loser. A finite game has an audience, just as you have an audience. Your managers who sent you here, your co-workers who are cheering you on, all of Austria who wants to know who the most agile team is. <laughs> and if you win, they will give you applause, and you will win. And so it's important in, in a finite game to have an audience. In an infinite game, the goal of the game, oh, in finite games, what are some finite games? I mean, football, soccer, getting an academic degree, getting, <laughs> right? I have won. I have beat the system. I have this prize. Or getting a promotion at work. These are finite games. An infinite game, the goal of the game is to keep playing the game. And so there are rules, but it's like a finite state machine. If the rules define the transitions and there's a finite number of players, eventually the game will come to an end or go into a boring loop. So, there are rules for changing the rules. And so, infinite games include life, career, scrum, and love. Evil is playing, well, Evil is playing an infinite game as though it were a finite game. Playing marriage to win. Playing career to win. And there is only one infinite game. We like to think in terms of games in terms of motivation. We're motivated to win. So what motivates you? Some people need more motivation than others. <laughs> so there is an author named Daniel Pink, who I once met in London, who points out that people are intrinsically motivated. How many of you have watched the YouTube video called Drive by Daniel Pink. So, do you remember what are the three things he says that motivate people? Do you remember? Autonomy, mastery, autonomy, mastery and purpose. So, a scrum team is autonomous. There are no managers in scrum. The first thing you do is fire all the managers. Wayne Rossi. <laughs> Wayne Rossi, the vice president of Google, became vice president of Google Engineering in January of 2001. He had 160 people and they weren't getting anything done. They had 40 managers. He fired all the managers. But because Google is a good company, he hired them back as workers. Google's doing pretty well. So it's autonomous. We work toward mastery. 
So some of what you will be doing today is honing your scrum skills, getting better. One of the things, I mean, I had an interview with the press this morning, and it was supposed to be about Agile. And I said, well, Agile is just this thin layer on top of Scrum. Agile comes from the Agile Manifesto, interactions and individuals, doing. Customer collaboration, doing. Responding to change, doing, doing, doing. There is no thinking in Agile. Show me! Scrum is more than this. So Scrum comes from what informally is called Lean. It's about planning. It is about thinking. And so a lot of going beyond just a game and creating play and having a truly cooperative game requires thinking. Now, I mentioned that in an infinite game, we have rules for changing the rules. What do you call Calvin and Hobbes here in Calvin uh, Hobbes. It's Calvin and Hobbes. It's Steen and Stoffel in, uh, in Denmark. So you know Calvin and Hobbes. And he, they play a game called Calvin Ball. And, uh, and here, uh, well, you know the Calvin Ball rules, yeah, yeah. Anything we make up, well, you will pay for this. So as long as you have the ball, you can add one rule. No rule, no rule. If you don't touch the 30-yard base wicket with the flag, you have to hop on one foot. In Agile, we inspect and adapt. So we don't follow method. We do not follow a game with fixed rules that will end up in a winner and a loser. We keep changing the rules. So if we don't have a winner and a loser, why play? What's the reason? Are you here to win? Are you here for a winner and a loser? I mean, the winner here will get one of these trophies. I don't know if you've looked at them. They're worth about 40 euro a piece. Is anyone willing to sell me their trophy? <laughs> I'll give you 50. Oh, here's a tape right here. <laughs> wow, real capitalist, yes. <laughs> So, I mean, it's, it's not about the trophy, it's about the applause from the audience, right? No, there's a greater value. And Jeff Sutherland talks about this in the, the founding of Scrum, and there's a lot of stories about this. Toyota is all oriented toward generating value for its host country for generating value and a safe workplace for its employees. If you have those two things in your mission, then you can add value to your customers. This is from the mission statement of Toyota USA in Numi, California. What do you value? Do you value your corporate image? Do you value a better life? for your employees? Or do you value Euro? I mean, Euro, you can't, you can't eat them. You can't sleep in them. You can't sleep with them. I mean, why, why do we value Euro? It's just metal. It always stands for something else. What does it stand for? The great retirement home that your CEO wants to make in the mountains? Or the Porsche car that your head of marketing wants to buy? What do you value? Scrum and Agile will help you optimize any theory of value. And you have to decide. So in the Japanese world, the Japanese have invented a, world, a word called co-opetition.
It's a, co it's a combination of cooperation and competition. And I mean, companies like Honda and Toyota, they're always criticizing each other in public. Like, like Toyota says, well, we have a hybrid car. And Honda says, you idiots, you can't make up your mind. You're half gas and half electric. We have an all electric car. Capitalism. Somebody will learn, and it raises the level of the whole industry. Both Toyota and Honda will survive. And they will continue to differentiate themselves in the market by, with, through play. It's not just a game, it's play. Let's try some stuff. Just for fun. Toyota tried front wheel drive vehicles just for fun. They knew they would lose money. Scrum comes from this culture. This is where Jeff Sutherland's son got it. It was from Scrum. It was from, from Toyota. So the goal is to raise the level of the industry as a whole rather than your company. Now, the game you are about to be playing, I have been running for about 10 years and is called Velocity Game when I run it. I was running this in Stockholm inside of a client and we, had, we run three sprints and we had run two sprints and everyone was keeping track of their velocity and um, I think also keeping track of their ROI. And I said, is everyone ready for sprint three? And I got up my duck call. And one guy named Philip Selyanko got up and shouted, wait! Now, in this game, there are some Kaizens that are not obvious. You will have to challenge your product owner. Not everything is obvious. And when you discover this Kaizen, you will say, why was I so stupid to assume something else? But now you will have a trick, a special advantage. Philippe's team had discovered some of these. And he got up and said, we have some Kaizens. And we would like to trade them. We would like to give them to the other teams. Because it is more important that we all win than that any team wins. And, and me and my co-facilitator just looked at each other and said, what do we do now? <laughs> and we just let it go. What a beautiful moment. Here's a person who really understands the spirit of Agile and that this is about people and the future of humanity. Humanity has a lot of challenges right now. So in today's game, you're playing a game for an audience. You want to win. So you get applause. Who's your audience? What value are you generating? Why is the world a better place for you winning today? Will you play? Or will you compete? Or will you follow a method? What can you do today to help produce the greatest value? Part of the value is fun. Everyone's going to have fun today. I wish you all good luck. Go out there, change the world of work. Best of luck to all of you.